Nicol holding the reins following Dick Campbell's shock resignation on Tuesday. Both sides sitting on 21 points with the pars second on goal difference. So, a crucial game for Nicol as he led the EastEnders against his old club. Much expected from this game and the supporters in Fife weren't to be disappointed. Owen Coyle involved in this opening goal for Dunfermline. He's clearly held back by Paul Brown and after the free kick was retaken, Justin Skinner floated it right in for David Moss to put the pars one ahead. That's what David Moss is there for. Perfectly flighted free kick. 1-0 Dunfermline. Well, Ray Throwers almost pulled back an equaliser when Jay Steen tried this shot from the edge of the box, not too far away. Good effort from him, and he just didn't quite get a hold of it. Chance coming up for Dunfermline to go 2-0 ahead. Stevie Crawford through on goal, and that's a very good save from Guido van der Kamp. Nicely set up by Stephen Hampshire, and Crawford denied. Well, Ray Throvers trying hard to get an equaliser before half-time. And Stephen Hampshire's back pass there, headed clear by Ian Westwater. Into the second period, good build-up this from Dunfermline. McGrorty squares it for Owen Coyle, and his left foot shot just wide of the post. Another good effort for the Pars, but it stayed at 1-0. Ray Throvers trying desperately to get the equaliser. Agathy with the wild attempt there, headed clear by Moss. And the shot coming back in, well saved by Ian Westwater. Another chance for Agathy here, and his shot clips the crossbar. Good effort, unlucky. Another chance for Dunfermline to go two ahead, and this time David Moss's header goes wide. When he sees this one again, though, he'll know he should have scored. Free throwers still pressing forward, and some determined play coming up now from number 10, Alex Burns. Keeps possession, gets his shot in, and that's a good save by Ian Westwater. Here comes the equaliser, though. Jay Steen away on his own on the left, controls it and fires an unstoppable left foot shot behind Westwater and into the net. This was a goal that gave Wraith Rovers a vital point. 1-1 it finished at East End Park. Yeah, the game ending 1-1 at East End Park after the match. Our man Tom Miller spoke to the rover responsible for securing that point, Jay Steen. Jay, as a local boy, it must have been a lot of pleasure in you today to get that equalising goal. Yeah, well, I knew how important the game was and I knew that we had to come here and if we're going to challenge for the league, come here and get a win. But we battled and we got the draw, which we're very happy with at the moment. Your own form this season uh, has certainly been much more consistent. What do you put that down to? The fact you're getting regular games or has this management team got a part to play? Uh, the management team have got a big part to play. They just tell me I can do my own thing going forward, but I've got to track back and help the defence out. And that's really coming out and showing in my game, my confidence in that. Wraith Rovers, a uh, difficult season last year, flirted with relegation, but this season they're at the top end of the table. Is the squad good enough to go in and mount a challenge and perhaps secure a Premier place next season? Yeah, well, the players he's brought in have been good and the team's been very consistent and I think we have got it what, to, what it takes to go all the way. Yeah, Jay Steen ready to go all the way there for Wraith, but the spotlight on Pars caretaker boss Jimmy Nicol after the departure of Dick Campbell. We caught up with Jimmy after the final whistle at East End Park. We just can't get ourselves lifted because of the events this week with, you know, with Dick or just because it's a derby game against Wraith Rovers. You've got to be like that as often as you can in the first division. And if you're like that at the start of games, you should be able to go on to win games. You should be able to go on to win games 1-0, even when the opposition come into, come into the game. It doesn't matter. You've no divine right to dominate 90 minutes of football. But we've certainly got to eradicate the problem and start getting ourselves a couple of wins. I'm sure the players enjoyed the first half. I certainly enjoyed watching them, enjoyed their commitment, enjoyed the football. Unfortunately, we left no bad taste in it because it's another draw. You know, another two points away from Sydney. As you say, there are a lot of positives just now at the club, and uh, whoever comes into the manager's job here has a lot of quality to work with. What's your own stance in the management uh, vacancy, Jim? Is this one that you would like the challenge here at East End Park? 
Well, you said there was lots of positives now. It's no different from whenever Dick was here. There's always positives in the club. We were just getting the right, playing the right balance and, and how to go about it. That was all it was. And everybody's disappointed that with the draws we were having and some of the performances. But Dick was never far away from what he was wanting to achieve. You know, and it takes a wee bit of fine tuning then again and, and not to panic and get it sorted out. If somebody comes in here in two or three weeks, they're going to have a squad of players who work really hard during the week. They work hard and they're good fun and they'll get their minds on the Saturday. They're good players. They should be able to go on to win this division. And for your own part, will you make a formal application for the vacancy or will results in the park in the coming weeks be enough to uh, enhance your CV? Well, the, the response from the players, performances and a few points on the board to improve our position might change things. But uh, I've only been asked to take over the training and pick my team. That's, I don't think that far ahead. I've learned in football never to think far ahead. I thought I was going to have four years at Melbourne. I was out within a year, so I just enjoy This is a great position to be in. If the chairman offered you the job tonight, would you accept it? Well, it's a hypothetical question because I know for any he won't, so it doesn't, it doesn't even come into my thinking at all. So you just got to continue to show yeah, that you're capable yeah, yeah. for whichever vacancy if it's not here at the firm. here and whatever happens, happens. And new people come in and want you to work, no problem. I enjoy working here and enjoy the thing. The fact is, nobody wants to leave. I, mean, I know Dick didn't want to leave a club with the ambition to be in the Premier League. It's not a dead-end job with a flog and a dead horse for the players they've got. This is a club that should be in the Premier League at the end of the season. Jimmy Nicol there, a very honest interview. Owen Coyle and Peter Heatherston joining me now in the Football First studio. Owen, it must have been a very difficult week. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I think, honestly, with Dick leaving, uh, we took everybody by surprise. Uh, he was very popular with the players on the football side and out with that. You know, he's a, a very nice man. And, you know, we were really caught in the hop with that. He, he sat here last Sunday and he, OK, he'd been beaten by St Mirren, but he gave no indication he was thinking and leaving. So, obviously, his mind was probably made up for him. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, th I think they're saying, you know, Dick decided to leave. I, I find that surprising because, you know, he was the type of man he was. If there was a battle, then, you know, he'd be the first pick on your side. Uh, you know, as regarding the football side, he was meticulous in his preparations, uh, very enthusiastic in his whole life, not just in football. And, you know, I, I find that a wee bit surprising. Would you guys like continuity with, with Jimmy still there? Yeah, well, as I say, Jimmy and, and Dick had worked, they worked really well together. And as Jimmy said there, it was only a matter of a little bits of fine tuning, you know, which they were dealing with day in, day out. And, uh, you know, it's just turning those draws into victories. And, you know, as soon as we do that, the better. Well, Peter Hellerson, the Wraith Rovers assistant, with us as well. Peter, what did you think of Wraith's performance yesterday? Happy enough with the point? Yeah, after the first half performance, Jim, we'd, we're happy to take a point away. Uh, the first half, uh, we didn't play at all. No fair we were by far the better team. But the second half, uh, we played the way we've been playing all season. And Scott is in the position we're in just now. And Jason's goal, great goal for yeah. the kid. Great finish. And uh, a point, I think, was the right result. I saw a draw, was the right result at the end of the day. You've made great progress in the, in the past few weeks. You must be very happy with that. Yeah, I think me and John are delighted with the boys who went about their business. I think off the field, Jim, things have been to take care of off the field. Uh, the board have told us just to get things sorted on the park. And if you get the results on the park, the way we've been doing, it always helps off the park. And, and the support has been brilliant and all. I know you're just a lad, but it was your birthday yesterday. How many returns was it? Oh, too many mentions, Jim. <laughs> you got a wee present at full time as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's only 22. Dick didn't want to leave a club with the ambition to be in the Premier League. 